So in the last video, we have done with this uh, addition of two numbers. So we have added 5 and 2 and when you, when you click on OK, the answer is 7, right? In the next video, we'll say, in, the, in this video, we'll talk about uh, the same thing, but instead of one object or one button, which is uh, add, we'll create one more object, one more button, which will be subtraction. So for that, instead of using the same code, we'll, we'll go for a fresh file. So we'll say new Java class, and we'll name this as calc, because we'll be having two features. Now, how to create, a, how to create this one? So let's say, we are making a calc. We'll create a class called as we'll say we'll name this class as add and sum because we'll be having so it's add and sub because it will be having both the features addition and subtraction. And in this, uh, first we need to define a constructor. So we'll say add sub. Now how many components I'll be needing here? So let's de declare all the components. First I need two text fields. So we'll say j text field. So we need two text fields, one will be T1 and second will be T2. Then we require two buttons, one for addition, second for subtraction. So we'll say button B1, comma B2. So B1 will be for addition and B2 for subtraction. We require a label to show the result and we'll say L. So we have this uh, five components. Let's initialize all the components. So how to initialize? We'll say T1 equal to new J text field uh, and we'll say this the size of this text field will be 20 uh, 20 will be uh, well 15 is enough I guess so t2 equal to new j text field and again it will give 5 oh, sorry, 15 then we took create object of b1 so we will say b1 equal to new j button say j button and it will have a text here so we'll say this text is add so we'll go for b2 now so we'll say new j button and here we'll be having subtract so we got two buttons we'll call a label and the by default the text here on the label should say result so we'll say Result. Okay, so now we have initialized all the uh, elements or all the objects. Let's add those objects. Now, how to add? We'll say add. First, we'll add T1, then we'll add T2, then we'll add B1, and we'll add B2, and we'll add L. Now, you can see we are getting errors, is because where to add? We cannot add in add sub. We need to add this in a J frame. So we'll say extends J frame. And you can see when you say, when you use this uh, swing, or uh, NetBeans, in, uh, when you swing in NetBeans, you get automatically package imported. But if you are doing this in Notepad, you have to say Java X dot swing dot star. Okay, so once you added all the components, let's set the layout, let's, let's set the size and the set uh, default close operation. So we can use that template we have created in the earlier tutorials called a swing code and tab. You can see we are getting all these codes. Make sure you import the package with the help of, uh, so when you, when you want to import the package, you can use a shortcut called as control. It is control plus shift plus I. So control shift I will import all the packages in NetBeans. I guess if you are using Eclipse, it should be control shift O. Okay, so now uh, we have, yeah, so we have done with the initialization, we have done with the addition, we, uh, we have done with the add adding components and the layout. Next thing we need is we need to add listeners to both the buttons. And to add listener, we'll say add, uh, what I'm doing, uh, it's b1 dot add action listener, and we'll say, uh, we'll say this, and when you say this, Again, we have two choices, either we can use anonymous object or this. Uh, initially, we'll use this, and then in the next tutorial, we'll use anonymous object again. So we'll say implements action listener. 
So let's come back to here. So it says this, since we are implementing, so we need to define a method called as public void action performed. Performed. It will take two parameter, or sorry, one parameter, which is action <coughs> event AE. Now here, uh, let me import the package, control shift I, and the package should be in, uh, from this package, java.aw.event. Say okay. Now, now let's uh, do the operation. What we need to do is we need to do the same thing which we have done in the last tutorial. We can just copy this code. We'll say copy and paste it here. Okay, and this is uh, this is for addition, right? Okay, this is for addition. Let's uh, do for subtraction also. Add action listener. So the the method is same, and we need to pass this. Uh, let, let's run this. Let's run this to see. Uh, we are we are forgetting one thing. We need to call. We need to use a main function here. So we'll say main, and let's call this. Let's call this add sub constructor. So we'll say add sub uh, obj equal to new add sub. Okay. Let's run this code now. If I say run file. And you can see we are getting a GUI here. Let's add, let's say six and one. When I click on add, the answer is seven, right? And now if I say, oh, this not this one. Let me go to calc. And if I say again run, now if I click on add, the answer will be seven. If I say five and two, if I click on add, the answer will be seven. If I click on sub, uh oh, still the answer is 7. It's because we have not written the logic for subtraction. But question arises, where to write the logic? Because every time you click on any button, maybe B1 or B2, it will execute the same statement. See, this should be same, right? This two lines should be same for both the buttons. But this should change. So what we need to do is, we need to check which button is clicked. Or there, there was an event on which button. So for this, we need to use a if statement or if condition. We'll check if b1 dot or we'll say there's a there's something called as ae here. We will ask ae so ae dot get source. So ae knows which button is clicked. If that button is b1, then it should be then it should be this statement. Clear? But we'll do one thing. We'll say int value. We'll declare it outside so that we will get the value. And we'll say some value by default which is 0. So if this is the condition, if this is the condition, we okay. should say value equal to num1 plus num2. Else, we'll say value equal to num1 minus num2. Clear? And that's it. So now if I run this code, If I say 5 and 2, if you click on add, the answer will be 7. If I click on sub, the answer will be 3. So this is how you need to add two numbers using two different buttons. In the next tutorial, we'll, see, we'll use how to do this with the help of anonymous object. So thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for further videos.